On October 26, 2019, Ibrahim al Samarai died. Now, if you don't recognize that name, that news may not mean anything to you at all. But for many people who knew him by a different name, his death was a moment of catharsis for them. You see, he was known by many other names, most especially by one, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. It's because of what he did as Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi that his death brings so much catharsis. He was a leader of ISIS and one of the most wanted terrorists in the world. A lot of current and former service members and families of people who died just got a big dose of closure. You would think that the news of his death would break, naming him as one of the most wanted men in the world. But evidently, not at the Washington Post. For some reason, their original headline calling him the Islamic State's terrorist-in-chief was changed quickly to call him an austere religious scholar. It spawned the hashtag WAPO death notices, and it's worth some roasted opinions. There is some debate over whether the West should have ever invaded Iraq in 2003. Many people think that the U.S. occupation was patently wrong and destabilized the region unnecessarily. As a retired soldier who spent a year in Iraq, I have my own opinions based on my experiences there. This is a subject, however, on which I normally wouldn't express my opinion because of a couple decades of not being allowed to do so by the Army. Even now, in retirement, I am still instinctively reluctant to debate if the U.S. should have invaded Iraq. Orders were issued. And I went. That's how it works when you wear a uniform. I can easily discuss certain persons, though. They are or were completely reprehensible, in my opinion. Abu Bakr is one of those people. You see, he wasn't some austere religious scholar, as the Washington Post briefly reported. He was the leader of ISIS, a murderous coward who killed men, women, and children for the sake of forming a caliphate for himself. He gathered cells of terrorists and trained his followers to strike from ambush. He didn't negotiate or engage in any diplomacy. His statements and gestures called for the death of Americans and advocated for the capture of Rome and Spain. In short, he wanted to reestablish a caliphate which encompassed every inch of the Middle East and beyond, and he didn't seem to care who had to die in order to do that. I'm not alone in that opinion, either. The backlash from the change in the title of that Washington Post article grew quickly on social media as people read the headline and created their own parodies to post under the hashtag. Mock obituaries were posted for Timothy McVeigh, Jeffrey Dahmer, Joseph Stalin, and others, each using understated words to conceal the hideousness of their crimes just like the Washington Post article did Abu Bakr. Once they realized that the hashtag was trending, the Washington Post changed the headline for this article again to something that was more accurate. Abu Bakr was now labeled the extremist leader of the Islamic State in the article. Good, but I wonder if the WAPO would have changed that headline from austere religious scholar if they hadn't been memed on and the hashtag hadn't trended. So just to be certain that the editors at the Washington Post understand how colossally stupid that headline was. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi wasn't some austere scholar. He was a power-hungry murderer who used religious fanaticism to inspire countless attacks on others. His followers beheaded journalists, aid workers, captured soldiers, and even people who left Western nations to join the cause of ISIS. They committed numerous atrocities in his name. Tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, are dead because of him. When the U.S. special operatives came for him on the 26th of October, he didn't surrender to them. He didn't die because they shot him either. His last act was to detonate a suicide vest while hiding in a tunnel, killing three children believed to be his own kids in the process. The Washington Post and other elements of the media establishment need to think less about who they might offend and accurately report the facts. This includes selecting headlines which reflect the true personality and actions of internationally recognized people who have died. If they were peaceful, scholarly, and benevolent, then reporting that they were is factual reporting. In Abu Bakr's case, though, listen, the guy ordered the beheading of journalists. One would think that the Washington Post, whose motto is, Democracy dies in darkness, would have little good to say about such a man. But no, just no. 
They are too busy fact-checking a meme posted by the president after the fact to worry about whether they post an accurate story about the death of a murderous bastard. You got him, WAPO. The photo is a fake. The president didn't actually award a Medal of Honor to the dog. He couldn't have done it yet anyway because Congress approves the award of the Medal of Honor. And I think that they're too busy upholding the principles of exposing the president's misdeeds to leave that closed-door classified impeachment hearing to vote on such a resolution right now. There's an election. I mean, the integrity of the Oval Office at stake. They don't seem to miss a beat reporting that over at the Washington Post. Journalism at its finest, huh? Democracy dies in darkness, indeed, and I look forward to the day when the WAPO editorial board finally gets a light bulb.